continuing on with our theme of AI and developers and the security risk within it, this report stems from in-depth interviews with 450 CISOs or equivalent in some of the leading companies and how AI has impacted them from a development point of view and a security point of view. To take us through this report, I brought on to the author, Siraj Shah, to break down exactly what the key elements in this report were. The first question I had for Siraj was, why conduct such a large sales study and report? What was the objectives and what you were hoping to find because of it? Yeah, a lot of um, the, the kind of background of, of why we wanted to do it was there was a lot of talk about you know the impact of ai on developers on CISOs, on everyone in 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 the kind of security space but we wanted to see what was actually really happening um you know the impact in terms of were there attacks uh linked to ai um you know what kinds of uh, opinions people had in the field of dealing with those things um as well as the kind of general day-to-day -day, um background of their of their roles you know how how is it impacting their roles what is it doing in terms of um workarounds that they might be trying to find if if they, they, they have issues are they dealing with too many tools um so so it was it was mainly based on ai but also a kind of clearer picture of security and development altogether the obvious question of course to us Siraj, is what were the key findings in the report that were most interesting and most surprising one of the main things was you know, the headline finding, I guess, was the the fact that there is actually a link between serious attacks and AI generated code. Um, you know, one in five organizations uh, stated that they had found, a, you know, had a serious attack uh, because of AI generated code. But I think if you look deeper into it and going into the future, the themes of accountability and responsibility come up. Um, you know, one of the questions asked who would be to blame or who would be responsible if if an AI code breach were to occur. And um, the fact that the answers were kind of so so widespread in terms of whether it was the d developer who generated the code or, or the security team really it, it begs more questions of how teams are now going to set themselves up to deal with this. They, they need something in place, a governance framework or something in place to uh, get clarity on, okay, if this was to occur, is it the security team's fault or, or is it someone else's fault? That theme of accountability is actually quite interesting because if no one feels accountable for AI-generated code, then no one will feel the need to ensure that it's secure. So I dug a little bit deeper into why there is such a big distance in accountability at the moment when it comes to AI-generated code. I think our uh, CISO, Mike, uh, put it put it like this. Uh, it was kind of like the internet before HTTPS. Um, it's kind of we are running before we're walking um, in terms of AI usage. So we're kind of going to figure it out as we go along. And I think that's the same the same is going for, for AI generated code um, in terms of securing it. We're, we're, we're going to find out and it may take a big attack uh, of some sort, which is linked to AI code that stimulates this conversation more and it actually makes uh, organizations take action um, and actually, you know, identify who is accountable, um, what what needs to be done to to kind of address this. And, and yeah, and, and the question is, yeah, you know, there's a blame question, but maybe it's more... The, the terminology should be responsibility because, uh, you know, who, who does the buck sit with, essentially? But it's not just accountability that's a big issue. It's also visibility. Most organizations don't actually know how much of their code is being generated by AI. And if you don't have that crucial stat, then you don't really know how to improve or focus your security efforts. Firstly, on a similar theme to, to the accountability, there's the fact that it's not just who you know is responsible um, if something were to go wrong but also tracking whether something has gone wrong there's still uh, you know I think organizations are still far behind on actually tracking all of their lines of code on whether they are AI generated or not um, I think the divide is even bigger in, in, in Europe than the US um, and it's clear that um, you know all of these things are linked uh, so, so we see for example code in production um, in the US is, is higher in terms of AI usage, um, but they're also tracking it more and therefore they're also finding more AI vulnerabilities. So there's clearly something there that needs to be done in terms of tracking AI usage because if you're not aware that there is AI usage, then how are you going to know that 
a incident occurred because of it. If you've been watching this show, well, watching other videos from me, you'll probably not be surprised that I'm not super optimistic about AI. I think it's really cool. I really enjoy using it, but it also freaks me out a lot. So that's why something in this report caught my eye and took me by surprise. And that is optimism. Within the security leadership community, there's a lot of optimism about AI and the direction and impact that it's going to have specifically on security. Yes, there are concerns around, you know, the vulnerabilities that AI generated code can bring up, but there is also a lot of positivity around AI usage in terms of securing um, your organization. So whether that's through uh, using, you know, AI penetration testing, whether that's AI that will be able to write fully secure code, uh, or whether that's AI used to fix uh, vulnerabilities. So uh, organizations in general, CISOs, developers, AppSec engineers are very optimistic um, or are already very much using uh, these kind of uh, tools right now in their organizations. Something unsurprising that the report brings up, it's still very interesting to put numbers to it, is the difference between AI adoption when it comes to code between USA and Europe. Unsurprisingly, the USA is further ahead on adopting AI into their pipelines, into their processes. So I asked Siraj why he thought this was the case. I think it's kind of common in, in terms of uh, technology usage, um, you know, with cloud uh, and with everything else that's that's gone on before. US has always been ahead of the curve. Europe kind of follows. And actually, one of the other stats was, was around, com you know, just comparing non-AI security incidents uh, between EU and, and US. And, and the US actually had far more. Um, but the, the flip side is that because they're far ahead of, of AI usage and they're tracking it more, the long-term impact uh, is still kind of there to be seen. I think the differences are obviously, uh, you know, in the EU, there's a lot more regulation. There's a lot more um, compliance uh, kind of frameworks that, that people need to follow. And therefore, maybe AI rollouts will be slower. They'll be more ca cautious uh, about doing so. Um, but when they do it, they will have to make sure that they are tracking it. Otherwise, they won't just be behind US organizations, but they will also feel, uh, you know, more impact uh, from incidents. Another very interesting stat that the report bring out is a correlation between the amount of tools and vendors being used and the amount of security incidents. You'll be not surprised that there is a new groundbreaking AI coding tool coming up, it seems like, every week, if not every day. But here's something surprising. The report stated that if the number of tools that were being used increases, the amount of security incidents also increased. So I asked Suraj why he thought this might have been the case. Yeah, I think it's something that's um, in the cyber security space, especially there's so many different elements to, to cover. And I think sometimes uh, the the decision in, in, in organizations has been to, okay, I need a different tool for this and it will give me more coverage um, uh, because I'll have myself, you know, with a SaaS tool and then I'll, I'll, I'll have SCA somewhere else and I'll have DAS somewhere else. Um, but what we're seeing from the data is actually that also means more uh, cognitive load essentially for the developers who are dealing with all these tools. They have to learn how to use them. They have to learn how to perceive the uh, alerts are getting on these uh, these things and it's just taking them more time to remediate. So overall, it's, it's showing that, yeah, the more tools you have, it doesn't really make you safer. And actually that integrating more tools in, 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 into one place is, is probably a, a better fit um, and has better outcomes. And I have one final question for Suraj. The report is called The State of AI in Security and Development. So I asked Suraj, what is the state of AI in security and development. The state of AI in security and development right now is very much a, um, a work in progress in terms of AI. Uh, we are, um, as I say, going in head first in terms of tr trying to use AI, which is great for both protecting and for, um, you know, and it's being used uh, for generating code and, and other things. However, the impact uh, that it's going to lead to, I think in the next few years, we will see a big AI code attack. We will see more incidents related to AI code. I think we're already seeing more incidents related to AI in general. And therefore, organizations need to do more in terms of tracking, in terms of making sure accountability is right. And I think 
uh, we're still very much a work in progress of, of getting that right. And if you want to hear more about this report and more from Siraj himself, you'll be able to catch him live on Thursday, the 6th of November in the webinar. There will be links to the report and that webinar in the description. So make sure you check that out, register for that webinar and ask Siraj all the questions that I didn't get the chance to.